How are we doing, friends? Welcome back, as always, to Continues to Tick. You guys saw the title. I've now been a dividend investor for four years. And in this video, I'm going to give you some of the key points that I've learned over these last four years. It's crazy. Time has passed. Maybe some of you guys have been here from the very beginning of the journey. Maybe you guys haven't. I don't know. I just know at the same time, time has passed quickly and slowly. But I think that's why you also just have to continue to push. You continue to push forward. But as always, friends, with this video, this is a topic for today. You can use the timestamps down below to get to it. It'll be at the very end of my video. But before, we'll go ahead and jump into the portfolio review. So here we are, friends. We're at $92,866.76. And, you know, if you're a follower of the investing world, you know, maybe about two weeks ago, there's a large dip in the market. Either way, that's how much I really don't pay attention to what is actively going on. Because as a dividend investor, you're investing for the long term. So you really don't have to pay attention to these big swings. But if we look back over this month chart, this is that dip that I'm talking to you about. And I guess it did happen, you know, about two weeks, a week ago. And now it just recovered. So just as quickly as it went down, it recovered and we're back even higher <laughs> than where we were before. Look at that. But that's how these markets move, right? So that's why at the same time, it pays nothing to have to pay attention to this. Like there's no value behind that. If you know what you're investing for, if you have confidence in your portfolio, if you have confidence in your investing strategy, there's no reason why a lot of these short-term losses, all this turbulence has to take away any of your daily energy. There's no value behind that. And as you can see, friends, I've been through a couple of these. Like just to just to look at this graph here. You know, we started roughly, I like to say July 20th, the year 2020, 2020 nonetheless, but July 19th or so. But as you can see, as we work through this graph here, I've been through a couple down points already in my four years of being a dividend investor. This one was a rather large one right here. And then we go up and down and up and down. But overall, when you zoom out the trajectory it is continuing to do what it's supposed to which is go up and a lot of this you could say it is forced because i continue to funnel every single week into this portfolio but part of it is the markets moving up as well and then just like everything goes up it will at some points come down and that is just what i've seen over the last four years so towards the end i do have some key points that i do want to share with you that's a little sneak peek into one of them but here we are friends almost at 93k the next current goal is to reach 100k we'll see when we hit it but nonetheless we continue to move upward and forward time is on our side and let me just show you a little bit more of the data here so this is where i found on m1 finance i can actually see what my gain percentage is so my cost basis is around 70,000, almost seventy-one thousand dollars, and my current value is almost 93,000. i have 50 positions my unrealized gain for the portfolio is $21,959 or a 30% return. And that's pretty solid, especially for a dividend portfolio or a dividend growth portfolio. That's really solid. And as you can see here, my best gainer is Nvidia, followed by Exxon, Aflac, Oracle, Apple, Chubb, and General Dynamics. So a couple different sectors here and my top performers I'm not going to go super deep into the data for this video that's something that i leave for my monthly portfolio reviews but as we make our way down friends we can take a look and see what our best sectors are with a 400 percent gain and as you saw a lot of that is coming from nvidia itself which continues to do what it does and then energy is the second best followed by financials industrials and then my etf and index fund so as you can see here with my tech, right? My actual weight is a lot higher than my target. That's been something that's been kind of just in the back of my mind because it's Nvidia that continues to perform so well. It's taken a greater chunk of my sector overall, but you know, I'm young, I'm a believer in AI. I'm a believer in what they're doing. I'm gonna ride or die with it. So if it continues to balloon up and give me stock splits and everything, I'm gonna love it. If it, can, if it just all of a sudden crashes, I'll live with it. I'm just going to ride or die with it for now, but it's definitely something that I've considered just kind of taking out and spreading out amongst my portfolio. But a lot of my gain has been coming from tech 
And as they say, when you're younger, invest heavier into tech. I'm 29. I'm going to be 29 next week, next weekend, next Saturday. I'm just going to keep it. I'm still young. I'm going to continue to invest in tech. I'm a believer of it. But as far as, let's see, the past year, this is what the chart looks like year to date. And if we look back at the year, so over the year, we've earned $2,309 of dividends. This is the last three months. We've earned $557 of dividends. The last month, $128. Last week, $50. And see, this is the thing, right? When you're a dividend investor, that's not the prettiest graph, right? I mean, at some point, it looks like it went down. But just because the market falls down, and this is, again, another reason why I really don't pay attention to what the markets are doing, unless it directly impacts one of my holdings, you know, when it comes time to you know, give, give out an update, right? It doesn't affect me. My dividends earned are still the same. I still earn $128 of dividends, despite this big old <laughs> crater here. And, and that's what you have to focus on as a dividend investor, is the passive income coming in, the income. When you say passive, it doesn't really get much more passive than being a dividend investor. Like for with real estate, you know, people have their own hot take on whether it's passive or not. And sure, there's decisions you have to make as a dividend investor, but there's literally nothing directly that you're doing that's going to change the outcome. You just put your money into a company, they pay you a dividend, that's it. That's almost as passive as you can get with your money, you know, just as an example. In comparison to, one comparison to being a dividend investor versus real estate investor. And this isn't to say, I want to get into real estate, it's still one of my big goals. You know, at 29, I was hoping to already be in property and have something in my portfolio in real estate but these markets are wild. I am actually decided to invest into my career development in the hopes that I will get a better income and a better overall return going into my 30s. So that is a strategy that I chose. That is how this life works, right? You have to kind of choose your strategy and it's not like you can choose it, like everything you want to do all at once. You do have to choose a path. I chose to invest in career development than to invest right now in real estate. But I know it'll give me a bigger shovel, and I'm hoping with that bigger shovel, which is a greater source of income, that's what I mean, it will allow me in my 30s to buy real estate at a much quicker pace. We'll see what happens, right? I mean, life continues to happen. There's only so much you know, you can do once you choose a path. You either see it through, or you continue to adjust and pivot on all these paths that you take, ultimately having no traction, ultimately not seeing an outcome, not seeing anything through to fruition. That is a little bit of the data for the portfolio. Um, that's kind of where we're currently at. Let me show you a little bit of some activity here, just some motivation and some transparency. So I'm still investing $100 every week. I'll be honest, ever since I took my pay cut though, right? Because now I work as an entry level nurse consultant. I do get to work from home. I work as an RN, if you guys didn't know, but the runway for this nurse consultant pathway is really high. Like for example, at my prior job working in the prison as a nurse, I was making $134,000. Quite a bit, right? Now I make 110. So I did take a $24,000 pay cut and I do feel it. And it does feel like a step backwards financially, right? Income wise, but career wise, it's a step forward because it is a promotion. The runway required a pay cut to 110,000. I will eventually in this current role with maybe five, seven years, over time, right, get raises incrementally, I will eventually get to 190,000, maybe $200,000 as a nurse consultant. So that was, that was the purpose behind this. Because working as a nurse on the floor, at the prison or in a hospital, I wouldn't be making that money, especially with the flexibility I will be having for work-life balance as a nurse consultant. So my goal is to eventually make $190,000, $200,000 as a nurse consultant and work from home, right? Where then as, as I work from home, I have the flexibility to have other side hustles and yada yada, right? So that's just, again, a little update for the people that aren't aware of my current financial strategy. Career-wise, I think it's important to share that from time to time. And especially in this video, because this is like a, a milestone marker video, four years as a dividend investor. So all that sidetrack, right, pushed out the way. I do invest $100 every week for now. That is my bare minimum. And I do feel it, it is tight. It's $433 a month. I also do therapy um, every single month, couples and individual. You know, I'm investing in my relationship with myself and my partner. 
So a lot of my money does go there. And as far as some dividend activity, you know, these are just some examples. So Apple paid me $3, O paid me $10, Procter & Gamble paid me 11, Alliant paid me eight, uh, General Dynamics paid me five, ABM paid me four, and you know, so on and so forth, right? Like Verizon paid me $16, AT&T paid me 15, and JP Morgan Chase paid me 14. So some of these are actually getting pretty big. And every once in a while you see some buys here, kind of sprinkled in here. But the main point to this activity section is it's tight. It's tight, I'm feeling it, I'm feeling the pay cut, I'm feeling my current expenses, and I'm just trying to hold on right now. So we'll see how it continues to play out. My goal is to hold $100 every week as my minimum line, but I'm feeling it, so we'll see. And now here we are, friends, right? At the very end, with these key points, I wanna talk about now what it's been like being a dividend investor for four years. I do have some key points that I wanna share with you. I have a total of four. In each one, I'll spend a little bit of time and we'll break down what I mean by them. So the first one, friends. My first key point is to avoid stopping. So as you are a dividend investor, you're gonna realize that one of the keys is literally consistency. And I've been saying it since the very beginning in some of my earliest videos, because it's something that I realized quite early on in this journey, is that consistency leads to progress, progress leads to results, and then those results are what people see. That's just a, a saying that I kind of came up with as I started seeing what it was like to be a dividend investor. Let me break it down again. Consistency leads to progress, right? If you show up consistently every single week and fund your portfolio, you're gonna see progress. We all start from zero. If you show up and regularly invest into your portfolio, that's consistency. Over time, it's gonna compile, right, and compound, and you will see progress. Progress over time leads to results that people see, right? I just came out with a milestone video of $90,000. You guys saw the results. The results are what you see, but the, the formula that happened before that was consistency and then progress. Progress leads to results. So a big thing with being a dividend investor is you want to keep the momentum alive, especially in the early on part of your portfolio. It's gonna be very slow going, very slow moving, but you just have to continue to just believe and show up and fund it and fund it. It's like taking care of like a little baby seedling. Like those analogies are those pictures that you see when it comes to a financial um, tree, right? It literally starts as a seed, goes into a seedling, a baby plant, a bigger plant, a bigger plant, and then a tree. And now that tree gives you shade, right? So like that's the whole idea with this is eventually this portfolio is gonna give me shade. It's gonna grow big enough to give me passive income that's significant. And it's already giving me around 2,400, almost $2,500 for the year, which is pretty neat. You know, instantly a $2,000 pay bump. Sure, taxes and everything aren't included in that, right, in that just example, but you know, just bear with me. You know, a raise is a raise. So the biggest thing I, I just seen over time, friends, is just to avoid stopping. Because once you stop, that disrupts the consistency. And in disrupting consistency, you will disrupt progress. And once you disrupt progress, you disrupt results. So just go literally based off that formula that I've told you, that equation. And that is a big key to being a dividend investor. And at the root, it is consistency. So avoid stopping. And another key with avoiding stopping, right, that I've noticed is that when you stop, you really don't know when you will start again. It could be a day, it could be a week, it could be a month, it could be forever, right? You just don't know. So avoid even the temptation of stopping because you never know how long you'll be stopping for, right? And that's a good point that I've realized over time. So by not even giving myself an option to stop, I don't stop. That's why I've gotten here um, in the time that I've got here, which is about four years. So that's number one. So number two, time is very important. Time is something that you're going to realize as a dividend investor is something you'll never gain back. And this correlates with life. In life, you can waste your time and your outcome is probably going to be one where you just wasted time, right? We all want things. We all want things. We all want outcomes. Are you working towards it? Are you aligning current self with the future goal that you want? Are you putting yourself in alignment with that vision, right? And if you are, then you, you continue to execute every single day, every week, every month, however 
frequency that you're going at. But the other piece of this, apart from consistency, apart from actually executing on your plan, it is time. Time is very important. You have to consistently execute on your plan over time. And again, that is how you get to the goal, or you at least give yourself the best chance or a chance to hit your goal. So time is very important here because early on in my portfolio, I consistently showed up, I was executing on my plan and it's been four years. So this is how I've gone from where I started to $90,000 in my portfolio. And a big component of that was the utilization of time. You have to utilize time and leverage it to your advantage. And that is what you do as a dividend investor. Part of when you think of time as a dividend investor also is starting early. I started at the age of 24, right? 24 and a half or so. Now I'm gonna be 29. I'm just barely gonna be five, or actually, I'm just barely four years into this. I plan to retire in my 50s, right? I still have two more decades to go. So I still have even more time. And I did see a video the other day where they said that once hitting your first 100k is the hardest and from there everything starts to exponentially compound even more rapidly but the point is you do have to leverage time time is very important it's a key part of the formula don't stop be consistent and also leverage your time utilize time understand that time does play a factor in this you're not going to get rich overnight you're not going to get rich or wealthy in in you know a decade it takes two, three decades at the pace of being a dividend investor. It's a mindset. So that's number two. Number three, right? A solid career and income helps a lot. Over the four years of being a dividend investor, I realized that one of the most important factors is my ability to consistently invest. At the very root of that, what helps with that? It's having the income source, right? The shovel that we talked about to be able to to invest so that's where it starts that's the root and the root of that is me having a nursing career which is very stable it pays really well and now with the money i make from that career that makes good money and pays very very well and it is very stable i now take some excess money and throw it into my dividend portfolio and that really does help a lot you know it wasn't until recently now that i took a pay cut that I actually started to think about you know anything in regards to money in my portfolio before i just i'd set a minimum amount i throw it in my portfolio don't even have to think about it and i knew that it was because of my career being very solid very stable um you know I, there's no down markets in being a nurse and the money that i make is sufficient it's sufficient to live a good solid middle class one big tip for my whole thing of being a dividend investor is make sure your shovel is solid and oftentimes when you look at the root it'll be what is your career and how much money do you make you need both of those things to be in alignment with being able to invest regularly and at a good pace with the outcome that you want right if you want to have a million dollar dividend portfolio you probably have to have a certain pace or if you want to build a three million dollar dividend portfolio you have to go at a certain pace if you only want a five hundred thousand dollar dividend portfolio again that's a different pace so align the pace that you're trying to invest with your career income source to the outcome, to the frequency and the funnel into your portfolio. So that's just one example, but that's a big tip that I highly, highly recommend you think about as a dividend investor. So this one is the last one. It's called forget about it. So I've been a dividend investor for four years. I started off this video by kind of showing you my portfolio and telling you, oh, you know, there was a downturn in the market, but I could care less, right? just to be blunt you that, that the only reason why I don't really care about these downturns is because I do put myself in a position to forget about my portfolio and that is something I can't stress enough if it's not broken don't fix it you know if it's something you have to leave alone don't tinker with it right that is how you have to look at a dividend portfolio that's how I look at it that's my strategy my strategy is very much set it and forget it and it's still an active approach because I still look at my portfolio weekly but I don't look at it weekly as if I'm going to do anything about it. I invested into blue chip boring company stocks, which are very stable. They've been around for a long time. They've been proven. There's no reason for me to chase percentages in pennies or dollars. Like I'm investing for the future. I'm investing for decades. I will burn myself out if I do that. For me, I just set it and forget it. 
I've trusted the fact that I've done so much research at the beginning. I've trusted the fact that I've seen my portfolio trend for four years. There's really no reason for me to go in and tinker with it, me to go in and try to fix it. It's not broken. It's something that shouldn't be touched. So I just forget about it. So a big tip for me, friends, from me, is forget about your dividend portfolio. Once you have established it, once you've got it to a good place, once you've kind of balanced it out, and it's something that you've seen trend positively for a good chunk of time, forget about it. Don't think about it. If you look at it, don't look at it with the intention to change it. Just leave it alone. Forget about it. It's been four years and the amount of energy I've gotten back, right, since starting my portfolio. It has been noticeable. At the very beginning of my portfolio, right, of my dividend journey, I was always constantly looking at my portfolio, kind of scared if it would stay balanced or if it would fall, right? Over time, I've noticed that it didn't fall and it stayed balanced and it positively grew. Eventually, I was able to leave it alone, you know, at an easier rate. And now I really am just able to leave it alone and I just trust it. Being able to forget about it will help you because you're going to be investing for decades. You're going to be investing for decades. Your life is going to happen. You know, you may build a family. You may get together with a partner. You know, you may focus on career development. Maybe you have other side hustles. Maybe you get into real estate. Other areas of your life are going to take your bandwidth away. And that's just how life goes. I thought when I first started this journey at the age of 24, it was going to go a certain way and it hasn't. It's gone when I zoomed out in the overall trajectory of that way, but the little details, right? And all these things happen because of life happens. It's just how it goes. The, l the less you can focus on your dividend portfolio, the better, especially if it continues to be positively moving is my biggest recommendation. So forget your portfolio, enjoy looking at it, but leave it alone. And that's where I'll end with these key points. And friends, it's been a journey. You know, we're four years into this. I can't wait to continue to see how this continues to evolve. My channel's called Continues to Tick because that's just time, right? Time moving. I'm leveraging time to my advantage. And I'm just trying to execute on my vision, execute on my plan. There's nothing special that I'm doing here. I'm doing something very basic and it's working out for me. And I'm hoping just over time to set one example of how you can build a dividend portfolio. And if you follow along the journey with me, I continue to wish you the best success. You're not doing it alone. I'm riding with you. We're trying to build that passive income pillow. I know we all want, but it's crazy friends. We've come a long way. It's been four years. I'm getting busier as, as my life continues to unfold, but my dividend portfolio continues to move with me. And that's something I am very proud of. I'll see you guys on the next video. And until then, take care.